Hey friends, so today we're gonna talk about the Aurora background gradients. This was the soft blurry gradient background part of our top 10 trends for 2021. And next to Glasmorphism, that was the second most popular trend on that list. And obviously they also merged together very well. So I wanted to give you a brief overview of this trend. And also I wrote an article for the UX Collective that you can find on Medium. And I'm happy to say that on the first day, it's actually trending right now on the first place of the entire platform. So thank you for that. I'm just feeling super grateful that you find it useful. So let's begin, shall we? So if you've been following me for a little bit longer, then you probably know that I believe that right now UI is the main differentiator of any digital product next to this sort of value proposition that it has. And the UX in terms of everything else is really not that important anymore because first of all, people will need to see the value and they will need to see a nice looking UI to be even interested in checking your product out. So if your UI is bland and boring and uninteresting, most users are not gonna even find out how great your UX is. So they're not going to check out the flow if the app is not looking trustworthy, interesting, or it doesn't connect with them on some emotional level. But of course, still the most important part of any successful product is the value proposition. So what value does it actually bring to the customer, to the user? So if the value you provide is so insanely good, then people will jump through like the flaming hoops of horrible UX and dark patterns gladly and they'll even thank you for it. So if you're thinking about success, you need to start with the value proposition. But then of course the good UX is essential when the person actually gets the product, gets the app and starts using it. But what gets them to be interested is the UI. It's the first impression. It's the screenshots in the app store. It's the first five seconds that they spend on a website. And I've been fortunate enough to name a couple of these visual trends like new morphism and glass morphism, but it was more about kind of making sense in the chaos. So it wasn't really about saying that these trends are necessarily the best ones. So it was a dark and gloomy day today and now the sun just came out to kind of destroy all my lighting. I need to wait this out a little bit, sorry. So both glass morphism and new morphism were a way to explore these potential new trends and they were all about finding a way to blend them in with your existing designs. So not really use them exclusively. And yeah, I really hate those new morphic buttons and new morphic form fields that people were overusing. This is definitely not the way. So let's address the biggest problem of all of these trends, accessibility. Because when I started with new morphism and then glass morphism, everybody started saying that, oh, you know, yeah, that's nice and all, but it's not really that accessible and that doesn't really work. So let me explain. These styles are not really meant to be a part of the actual important UI element. So avoid doing buttons, avoid doing checkboxes, forms, anything that's important in the interface should stay pretty normal and should stay within the good contrast guidelines because the important interface should be front and center and should be usable and should be readable and should be accessible, obviously. So what these styles should actually be is decoration. And if the actual structure of the card view, because they're mostly used for cards, you know, uh, if the actual structure of the card view is done right, then if then if somebody doesn't really see the card outline, it's still gonna be completely usable to them. So both of these styles are mostly used for cards and windows. And if you use it that way, then you have a nice looking interface that also has this little differentiator, something that actually takes it apart from the crowd of same looking Android apps. But yeah, take a look at the super exaggerated example. This is a nightmare of UI design because all that consistency and all that sameness is actually making all the products look the same. And people want products to feel crafted for them, not factory made white label garbage. And many people will say that they don't really need the beauty in products. They want the utility, they want the sameness and that they really like that minimal Android material design interface in all of their products because they just want to use them and forget about them. And that is fine, but most people, most regular consumers buy with their eyes and they need something delightful and they want something delightful and they expect something delightful. So. 
if you're gonna look like every other app in the store, then there's very little reason to check you out. Sorry. Okay, so a quick history lesson before we start with the whole Aurora thing. In 2007, when the first iPhone came out, Apple used skeuomorphism, which was a design style or design concept of using and imitating real world objects to make it easier for people to understand things. So you had ebooks lying on wooden virtual shelves, you had leather stitched notes and things like that. So it was just easier for you to grasp a completely new concept by using real world metaphors. And I think that all of those design styles are kind of swinging like a pendulum and it happens about every seven years. So in 2013, Apple introduced iOS 7, which was a huge departure from those skeuomorphic times, but it was a little bit too minimal and most people actually hated it when it came out. So what they did, they actually scaled it back a little bit in 2014 with iOS 8. And around that time when material design was also gaining in popularity, it kind of set the standards for all the modern design styles for the years to come. But now, seven years after that, it's 2021 and we are expecting something a little bit different. Maybe not a full swing back to a wooden shelf kind of interface, but something a little bit more organic, natural, a little bit more human, right? And we can see it a little bit with how the icons for messages for iMessage have changed over the years. So the very first one was very skeuomorphic. Then it went to being totally minimal. And then in macOS, it actually came back to being like a 3D, almost natural looking chat bubble. It just looks a little bit more interesting than all those minimal icons. Okay, so where does this whole Aurora thing come in? As I said, the interface should be the most important and most readable part of the story here. And if you use good hierarchy and if you use good structuring of this interface and of those form fields and buttons and text and everything, then you can try using decorations like Aurora and like glass morphism or even new morphism to make this interface stand out. Because the only part that's gonna be potentially non-accessible is gonna be the ornamentation. So as long as you do everything else right, you can play around and be creative and be expressive with your design. And by Aurora, I mean the blurred backgrounds that are mixing a couple of different colors in a non-linear way. So they don't really mix in a predictable way. They look more organic, more natural, more real. And in a way, Apple actually did this with the default wallpaper for macOS Big Sur. Because if you blur the wallpaper, you'll actually see that it looks exactly like the Aurora backgrounds. And in both cases, even without the blur, it works really good as a background for glass morphic elements. And another good example of the usage of these gradients is the Stripe website where they put a colorful ever-changing gradient in their header and it makes this website feel original and feel alive. So there are three main ways that you can try to actually create this effect yourself. And I've made two videos on that, but let's go over them really quickly again. So one of the ways is to create just three ovals of very similar colors and then blur them heavily and play around with their sizes, their opacity, as long as they kind of merge together in the middle very nicely. So that's one way. But the other way is actually using a radial gradient from the corners of a shape. So you create a rectangle and then add a radial gradient to a couple of the corners and then drag the handles, drag the blur. It can be a gradient from the same color to the same color, but just one side would be completely transparent and then just merge that together to create the effect that you desire. And the last way is to actually blur a photo because that's like the easiest way. For that you need a photo that's not going to be too overwhelmingly colorful. So something with like a subtle transition of colors like a sunset is going to be working way better than something very color heavy. And obviously you can merge these techniques. So you can actually create a rectangle with those radial gradients from the corners and then add some blurred shapes on top of that to create a more interesting effect. And if you pick the colors right, so if you pick a very similar color that's already there in the same spot for those blurred shapes, it's gonna make it look more natural and more organic. And then of course you can add some text like I did in this example. And then you can add a couple of these blurred elements on top of everything. So this is Aurora for you and I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you think about this new trend and are you gonna try it out. And as usual, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Cheers.